My name is Dr. Asad Usman, and I am one of the cardiac anesthesiologists and intensivists at the University of Pennsylvania and part of the Lung Rescue ECMO team. As an undergraduate at the University of Michigan, I had the opportunity to work in the world-famous Robert Bartlett lab. Dr. Robert Bartlett is considered the original inventor and pioneer of ECMO and mechanical support technologies. It was then when I became passionate about ECMO. When I was a second year resident, I received a feared call. My cousin and my brother were whitewater rafting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. My cousin had capsized and fell in the water, and I knew immediately that he would require ECMO support. Over the course of a few months, we feared the worst. My cousin would not survive. It was through this and other clinical experiences that I found myself gravitating towards understanding mechanical circulatory support. I now dedicate the majority of my time towards the betterment of all patients who are suffering extreme illness from cardiac or lung failure. Here in this presentation, I would like to highlight just a few of the many survivors that we have had. These patients suffer incredible difficulties and represent some of the sickest patients in the hospital. I see on a daily basis how this technology takes patients who are by all definitions dead and brings them back to life. I take a moment to remember those who have succumbed to severe illness such as my cousin. But I am also very grateful day in and day out to the patients and families who entrust the ECMO team with their loved one's life as we try our hardest to bring them back to recovery. Bria Iacona was one of the most memorable cases we've had. She was kept alive for over two and a half months in the HVICU. One Friday afternoon, her ECMO circuit began to fail. Her entire superior vena cava had clotted. With the assistance of cardiac surgery with Dr. Josh Grimm and interventional cardiology, Samir Kandahar, taking Brianna to the operating room for a heroic operation. I had quoted the family an over 80% chance of mortality. We had to emergently and rapidly exchange her ECMO circuit, and she survived. She was then evaluated by Dr. Christian Bermudez for a bilateral lung transplant. She's here to share her story with you today. Overall, things are good. There are definitely some tough days mixed in. At times, life after ECMO and a transplant can feel overwhelming and scary. There's a lot of unknown, so personally and as a family, we take it one day at a time. When I'm not feeling well, we sometimes even take it one hour at a time. Our holidays were good. They were even more special this year than any other year before. Last year in 2021, I missed all of the major holidays. This year, I was home and able to experience every little moment, including sharing meals with my family, picking out the perfect Christmas tree, and decorating our house. Now I am back at work full time. In August of 2021, five months after coming home from my six month extensive hospital and rehab stay, I went back to being a teacher at the elementary school I was working at before I got sick. I walk anywhere from three to five miles each day and have no problems keeping up with a physically and mentally demanding job. I am also able to play with my son in many activities like going to the park, sitting on the floor to complete a puzzle, or walking around our neighborhood. My greatest sincere thanks to all of the staff. Their hard work, dedication, love, and kindness saved my life. They all treated me like I was someone special and someone who deserved to survive and live a meaningful life. One of the nurses who took care of me after my transplant even bought my son a Christmas gift since I miss the holidays at home. I feel as though all of the staff will do whatever it takes to ensure that their patients are well taken care of. In the new year, I hope to continue in a positive direction with my health, finish out the school year as strong as I started, and continue making memories with my family. I'm Dr. Christian Bermudez, and I'm the surgical director of the ECMO program at, at Penn. I never thought when we start using ECMO, the impact that this technology would have in so many areas in medicine. Today, we're using this technology to rescue patients with advanced lung conditions, with heart attacks, as a bridge to transplant, both heart and lungs, using cardiac arrest, and many other areas of medicine. And I'm proud to be part of a very multidisciplinary team involving multiple specialists all with the same dedication. 
their pulmonologists, cardiologists, critical care, anesthesiologists, and a number of nurses and specialists. I want to celebrate those that have been on ECMO, patients that have, you know, suffered incredible uh, illnesses. And these are very, very sick patients that have been placed on these technologies, sometimes for months. And we have had the fortune of rescuing many of them. There's no doubt this has been an incredible contribution to the field and most importantly, have unified the medical team with only one focus, our patients. So we want to thank them for trusting us in their lives. I hope we continue to make progress and, and provide even better outcomes than we're providing today. How are you feeling today? Much better than before. Yeah. Getting better every single day. It gets easier each time. You get to explore more and more with your physical capabilities, so that's, you know, always exciting. How was your holidays? <laughs> Better than last year. Got to experience uh, having my whole family around. Getting to see my extended family as well, which was exciting for everyone. Are you working right now? I'm working in Chantilly, Virginia. Do you, do you have any thoughts or any good advice? for people that are on ECMO, survive ECMO. Don't get discouraged, keep the faith. Put one foot in front of the other, day after day, add in updates of efficient action. Network of support, rely on them, listen to the advice of the people who can help you out. You know, don't give up, it's up to you, the experts as well. What did you think of the care that you received down at Penn? Best I can get, angels on our shoulders. Do you remember any of your doctors down there? Who are they? Uh, Dr. Osman, Dr. Gucci, Cornfield, Vernick, some of the nurses as well. A lot of the nurses were really great. Just very good care of the doctors. You just can't say enough about Penn Presbyterian, you know, they saved your life and you're doing really good. You're on the mend. What do you think your biggest challenge was? I would say the neuropathy and the fatigue, getting your muscle memory back and your strength and your endurance regaining your balance it, it is, a, is a whole thing of learning how to walk again and your rhythm of going up and down the stairs and a just everyday test my name is bill vernick and i'm one of the co-medical directors for the Penn lung rescue program being part of this team has been incredibly satisfying especially to have seen it transform from just an idea to now a mature program. Watching these videos and pictures of our former patients and even having some patients come back and visit is an especially great bonus. We typically only get to meet our patients on their absolute worst day. And even when they recover enough to leave the hospital, they're often far from who they once were. So getting to see them get back to real life is incredibly satisfying. It gives us the strength to keep pushing forward on challenging cases as what we have to put patients through for their chance to survive is often hard to believe. It also allows us to try to give their families strength as watching what their loved one has to go through must be incredibly hard. But as evidence from the videos, it can be worth it. Miss Nguyen's story represents faith, hope, and love. And it was through care and dedication of the Penn Lung Rescue Team that helped her in the most difficult of times. Her story here begins in Florida when she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy and shortly thereafter was separated from him due to extreme respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation and ECMO. Over 30 hospitals chose not to admit her for ECMO care until we got the call at the Penn Lung Rescue Program. Ms. Nguyen traveled 1,000 miles away to the University of Pennsylvania with full ECMO support. She was taken to the operating room within days of arrival for a conversion to oxygenated right ventricular support, an advanced form of ECMO. After nearly two months of ECMO support, three months of ventilator support, and five months of hospital stay, she finally got to hold her newborn baby and was reunited with her family in Florida. She would like to now share her story with you. Hi everyone, this is Lan Wynn Kylie and Happy New Year's. I hope you guys had a great holiday, some downtime with your family. We spent Christmas here and had a pretty quiet Christmas with my in-laws and we got to celebrate my dad's 80th birthday as well as my son's um, baptism. 
both really big milestones for my family. And today I am at home. It's a beautiful sunny day here in, in central Florida. So just outside getting some fresh air and enjoying this beautiful weather. Dr. Assad asked me a couple of questions. So I wrote it down. I didn't want to forget to the medical staff at Penn Med. I would not be here today without all of you. I don't think the words thank you will ever be enough, but it's a start. My two months spent at Penn Med were actually filled with great memories despite being the hardest time of my life. Thank you to Dr. Ecker and his team, Dr. Assad for sharing his stories about the time he spent in Kauai because he knew we had honeymoon there the year prior. Joe from PT for allowing me to constantly crack jokes and probably the biggest thank you have to go out to the nurses who treated me like a sister. Beside caring for me, nurse um, Nicole painted my nails, nurse Caroline braided my hair, and how can I forget nurse Colleen for actually washing my hair, which is a pretty big deal. There are so many others I could thank, but I'll try to keep this short. A friend of mine once told me, your scars are someone else's hope. So I proudly show off these scars where the cannulas were that saved my life and gave me hope. That is what ECMO is to me, hope. So for future ECMO patients, hold on, not only to hope, but know that better days are coming. Thank you for letting me share my sincere gratitude to the team at Penn Med. You're in great hands. We can take somebody that almost everybody by any measure thinks is definitely going to die and save them. There's no reason a young woman who gets pneumonia should die from that. Our outcomes are some of the best in the country. We know that from our databases. This is one of the most fulfilling things I do. Like when I get to the outside hospital, the families are very scared. To be able to reassure them like, okay, if there's a shot, we can give it to you. What was happening before is when the patient would get that sick, they wouldn't call us because they knew they'll die in transport. I woke up and I felt like I had been stabbed in the back. They told me that I had pneumonia. My lungs weren't functioning properly. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. The chance of surviving was the percentage of being struck by lightning. The doctors had done pretty much everything that they could. Your life can change in an instant. I had no idea how critical the situation was. The one last chance we can try is the Penn Lung Rescue Unit. Dr. Vernick got up in the middle of the night and came and got me. Penn Lung Rescue came busting through the doors. I heard the helicopter land. It was like the cavalry arriving. The doctors were always like just at the perfect timing in the sequence, just a step ahead of where we needed to be to save her life. The ECMO machine is one of the key things that saved my life. The Lung Rescue Program is something that really changes the course of what can take place in an illness. Ed's case is one that I'll always remember. There were many reasons to want to decline the case. He was coming from far away, the outskirts of New York City. The call came in the middle of the night and it'd be turned down by multiple hospitals for ECMO. He was also incredibly sick, requiring high-dose presser, but yet he had been so vigorous before his acute illness that we felt the need to give him a chance. Prior to the beginning of the program, patients that were in need of our expertise would often have two options. One, continue consultation with our team, or in a very creative fashion, work with our PennStar team to bring these patients here in a very acute fashion. Oftentimes, these situations were very clinically challenging, and when they arrived here in our ICU, patients often were in a worse shape than they were when they started because of the transfer. What makes our program unique is our commitment to the best quality of care for our patients. We feel that if we cannot offer our expertise by bringing it to them, we should bring the patient to us. Hi, my name is Tony Scalise. I've had plans for my life since I was 12 years old. Almost dying at 55 was never one of those plans. Because of ECMO and all the great staff at the ICU at HUP, I'm still alive. I have been given a second chance at life and I will be forever grateful. I just spent my second Christmas with my family and with my girlfriend. I still have some significant challenges in my life and I'm learning to adjust to my disability. That said, 
I savor every day, every smile, every sunrise, every hug, and every breath. My perspective on life has changed forever, and I am truly blessed. I wish I could remember the names of all the angels in the ICU at HUP. But if any of you are here today, thank you, thank you, thank you. The nurses, the doctors, physical therapists, mental health professionals, and everyone at HUP were truly dedicated to my future and passionate about my well-being. I try my best every day to continue on my recovery. Some days I make progress, some days I have setbacks. My setbacks, however, do not define me. My will to live and not just survive is strong. I will live. I'd like to thank you, all of you, and all the work that you do for people like me. Thank you all. My name is Dr. Audrey Spaldi. I'm a cardiac anesthesiologist and intensivist at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm one of the physicians of the Penn Lung Rescue Team. Being part of the ECMO team at Penn is one of the most satisfying parts of my job. Day in and day out, I get to see how ECMO saves lives. We work with our colleagues in cardiac surgery, cardiology, and pulmonology to take care and save some of the sickest patients in the region. We also learn from every patient that we take care of to improve care for future patients. We have the opportunity to witness science in real time and study important breakthroughs. We think about our patients and their stories every single day, and we're excited to share some of them with you today. To our patients, their families, and loved ones, a truly heartfelt thank you for entrusting us with your lives when you were at your most vulnerable. It's seeing you now on the other side of an incredible battle that energizes us and motivates us to keep going. Being able to reunite families, to save the life of a mother, and to give hope when the situation seemed bleak. These are gifts that are truly priceless. For every patient that we've saved, we also never forget the ones that didn't make it. Together with the rest of the ECMO community, here at Penn, across the country, and around the world, we're working towards scientific breakthroughs. We hope that through our work, we can inch progress forward, so that what seems impossible today, tomorrow is simply possible.